Thank you for coming out this morning. I'm here to introduce Dr. Lauren Noel. Dr. Lauren Noel is a licensed naturopathic doctor and expert in natural medicine. She received her doctorate in naturopathic medicine from National College of Natural Medicine in Portland, Oregon. Since 2010, Dr. Noel has treated over 5,000 patients using natural therapies. Her areas of expertise are digestive disorders, thyroid and hormone imbalances, and primal nutrition. Dr. Noel lives in San Diego, California, where she treats patients locally and throughout the U.S. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Laura Noel. So I am a firm believer that food is medicine, and that's why we're all here, right? But it's not enough. For many of us, we go on the paleo diet and the clouds part, and we feel like a million bucks. But for many of us, we do that and we feel better, but we still don't feel amazing. Now, I think for us women, as you guys probably can agree, we're a little complicated. We, uh, you know, we're a little intricate, we need a little more love, and uh, this, I think, really applies in the area of um, health and nutrition. And so my approach is really tailoring a paleo diet for women. Um, in my practice, this is my uh, new clinic, Shine Natural Medicine. We opened in uh, September, so it was a huge dream of mine to open up my own clinic, and it finally happened last year. This uh, was our grand opening celebration really a proud family. It was a dream, really, having them fly out and coming to this event. It was really exciting. We had uh, about 200 people, was able to have tons of uh, friends and um, other businesses show up, and, and you know, just kind of a big community event. Um, in my practice, I treat primarily women. I'd say maybe 60, 70 percent women, and about 80 percent of them already are on the paleo diet. So, you know, they've had some real um, amazing improvements, but they still have some stuff going on. And so that's what I wanted to talk about um, today. It's a little tour of, of my clinic. This is the front here. I'll give you a little bit of a quick tour. This is uh, our front desk. As you can see, it's not the typical doctor's office that's very sterile and kind of scary when you walk in and all white walls everywhere. It's lots of color. This is our uh, community wall. It says, uh, what makes you shine? This is at our grand opening celebration. We had everyone write with chalkboard or uh, with that uh, chalk. Uh, what makes them shine, what lights them up. And I'm really about, you know, what I stand for, what's important to me is empowerment and uh, people being, you know, a bigger version of themselves. And I think health is one portion of that, but, um, and that includes the staff as well. So really want them to, uh, to be happy coming to work. This is our IV therapy lounge. So we have patients literally kick back and just hang out and chill while we do IV mineral um, antioxidant drips for them that are customized for them. This is for the local patients. But for my distant patients, we have a whole natural pharmacy that we can um, customize uh, treatment plans for the patients. So this is a, a kind of a pie of uh, all possible knowledge that applies to your health. So I'm being very generous by saying that this is what you actually know. <laughs> this is very generous because there's, you know, of all the knowledge in the world of what applies to health, what you know of this, this little pie is probably a little, little bit more than what's actually real. <laughs> this is what you don't know, and you're probably learning a lot of that here this weekend at Paleo FX, what you actually don't know. But what I'm talking about is what you don't know that you don't know. You know, and uh, I'm going to try to shed some light on that tonight, but there's, or sorry, this morning, <laughs> it was a late night, um, <laughs> this morning, and that's what you uh, find out by testing. Now, that, not this kind of testing, it probably brings up post-traumatic stress for you back in college, right? Um, <laughs> it's actually the kind of testing that provides a roadmap for you. So if you're in a new city, you're not just going to be wandering around aimlessly trying to find where you're going, although I've been doing that in Austin since I've been here, but you're actually going to be getting a map and finding out where it is that you're going, and that's exactly what testing provides. It gives you some direction of what's ha happening. So in my experience, I've treated several thousand patients at this point, many of them women and many of them paleo. These are some of the conditions that I tend to see in these ladies. So hormone imbalances, hidden infections, toxicity, and nutrient deficiencies. And I'll go into each one in a little bit more detail. So what do I mean by hormone imbalances? There's a few different ones. Uh, one in particular is thyroid dysregulation. Usually that means underactive thyroid. So usually the thyroid is sluggish. Sex hormone imbalances. This applies to um, estrogen, progesterone, DHEA, um, and testosterone. 
and adrenal dysfunction. And I'm sure if you guys have listened to podcasts, you probably have heard about adrenals a ton, um, but it affects many, many of us, especially in our current day and age. So with the sluggish thyroid, you tend to feel like a turtle. You're feeling really slow. It's hard to get up in the morning. You're cold. You're tired. Maybe you eat like a bird and you still can't lose weight. You have dry skin. You notice that your hair is coming out. You have friends pulling hair off of your clothes. You notice it in the drain. You have mood issues and you're constipated. It's kind of the typical low thyroid symptoms. And diet won't fix this. I mean, there are some nutrients you can get in your diet that are going to help it, but for many of us, it, diet isn't enough. Now, most doctors are familiar with low thyroid, but generally they don't really do the full panel of testing. So I want you guys to, um, if you're not familiar, these are the, the labs that you'd want to get checked to test for your, for your thyroid. So TSH, T3, T4, free, T3, free T3, free T4, and then the antibodies, anti-TPO, anti-thyroid binding globulin, and reverse T3. Now, 80% of the time, if you have a low thyroid, you actually have an autoimmune condition, and most doctors don't know that. So that's something you want to make sure your doctor is checking are these two antibodies. It's really, really important. And generally, they don't test it because it doesn't change their treatment. Because in conventional medicine, there's really no treatment for autoimmune disease besides immunosuppressive drugs. But from a naturopathic perspective, there's a lot that we can do because there's root causes why there's an autoimmune condition. But the first place we need to start is actually seeing if that's the case for you. Now, usually if you go to your doctor, they're going to be testing TSH and T4 only. But for many times, um, there's actually a problem converting T4 into T3, which is the active, usable form of thyroid. So you're going to you know, have normal labs but still feel like a train wreck. So, but... Just because you get the, uh, the exact pattern of what's going on with the labs, it's not addressing what the root cause actually is. And that's what naturopathic medicine is. It's looking under the hood, seeing what's going on with the engine, and actually addressing that so you can get long-term relief. And that's the fun part for me, is actually doing that investigative work, that digging. So... Like I said, I do believe in food as medicine. This is a way that I would customize a paleo diet for a woman who has a sluggish thyroid. So adding in things like Brazil nuts, which has a really great amount of selenium, um, seaweed like kelp, bladder rack, and then foods that are rich in zinc like oysters and pumpkin seeds. And then, of course, there's supplementation to take it a step further. There's a really great herb called ashwagandha, which is um, amazing for thyroid, for sluggish adrenals. Um, you can also, if need be, using glandulars and thyroid replacement. Then there's sex hormone imbalances. So this woman is having her own little personal summer. She's very, very hot. She's probably sweating and just, you know, kind of having her own little issue going on here. And we see that a lot with ladies who are having hot flashes. Um, and oftentimes this is because of estrogen levels that have dropped and they're getting surges of estrogen, so they get those hot flashes. Also, progesterone levels start to drop off at mid-30s, and, and they continue to get lower from there. Um, DHEA and testosterone, both of those, when they're deficient, you find that you're just kind of dragging, you're not getting the results in the gym that you want, and you can have some difficulties with, um, with weight gain. So diet alone won't address this. So there's lots of ways you can do it with natural medicine. <clears throat> And this is uh, just a general flow chart of how hormones are made in your body. And many of you guys probably know this, but the root is cholesterol. That's sort of like the main building block. And then to um, change it into other hormones, you add just different pieces to that, it's kind of like a, like a Lego. Brace yourselves, her PMS is coming. <laughs> My boyfriend told me to put this in here. <laughs> And then adrenal dysfunction. So this is just a, just a basic um, cortisol curve. So naturally in the morning, your cortisol should be high, so you pop out of bed, you're ready to go, and then it should gradually drop off throughout the day and be low at night so you can go to sleep. But for many of us, this is a typical pattern I see in a lot of women, a lot of stressed out women, even paleo women. The morning, their cortisol's low, they're tired, they're hitting the snooze button, they just want to go back to bed. But finally they get out of bed, they're having their coffee, they're ready to go, they feel like a human being again. And then the afternoon, maybe they're feeling, oh, 
all right, they might get a drop in the afternoon, and then as nighttime comes, they're a night owl, and they finally are productive, they can get everything done, maybe write all their blogs or whatever. So um, this is kind of a typical pattern, but it's, uh, you know, what, what happens is that this pulls from sex hormones, so maybe your, your libido isn't as good as it was, maybe your metabolism isn't as good, you're finding you're not getting the results out of the gym, um, or maybe you're having immune issues, so it really has some um, downstream effects. So from, an, uh, from a food as medicine standpoint, you want to add in more foods that are rich in vitamin C. Vitamin C is very healing for the adrenal glands. So the best food source of that is actually bell peppers. Brussels sprouts are high as well, and as, and as well as strawberries. <clears throat> and then adding in more complex carbs. Sometimes ladies are just cutting way too low on the carbohydrates and they're really dragging. It can interfere with um, adrenal function and thyroid function, so adding in some more carbs can make a huge difference. And then here's some general supplements too. Sleep, sleep a lot more. Our ancestors slept almost half their life and we sleep half of that now. And so it's a big, uh, big problem in modern day and age. Have fun and press the no button. This is one of the biggest things from ladies. We try to do it all and you can do anything, but you can't do everything. So say no from time to time. And this is a really big hidden one that I see for a lot of women is hidden infections. So I test for these all the time in my practice. This should say SIBO right here, S-I-B-O. Um, so viral infections, EBV is Epstein-Barr virus. This is like a grown-up version of mono. So if you had mono back in the day and you never really bounced back, it could be just a chronic viral infection. Um, herpes infections, bacterial, um, H. pylori, which is a bacteria that's oftentimes in the stomach or in the uh, small intestine, can cause heartburn and just digestive issues and also malabsorption of your nutrients. Um, SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So you can get overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine and cause um, gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea. Really, really common. Um, fungal infections or yeast infections and also parasitic infections. I see parasites all the time. It's crazy. Even if you don't travel, this is a real common thing I'm seeing with a lot of ladies. And generally, too, this can interfere with sleep because oftentimes parasites are awake at night, so it, it really disrupts sleep. Yum, right? They usually get really freaked out. So this is an example of a stool panel that I would run. Um, this is a, a lab doctor's data. I think they're really great at detecting uh, bacterial imbalances especially. So this would be an example of the beneficial bacteria. So we want to see threes and fours over here. So you can see the bacteroides and bifidobacterium. It says NG, which means no growth. So you have a lack of the good bacteria. And then this is imbalanced flora, so it's too high of these particular bacteria. And then this is dysbiotic, so this bacteria literally should not be there. So this is when we would do more of an antibacterial approach. So diet alone will not address this. And then they have uh, many yeast. So this person probably is really craving sugar, probably has a lot of bloating. And then we would treat it and then retest. It's all about testing and actually getting the updated information. Um, this is a stool panel that I run from uh, BioHealth. So in this example, this patient had positive H. pylori which is actually very treatable using natural medicine. I've used um, Matula tea as a treatment for that, and I've had basically 100% success. I had one patient where it didn't work, but we thought she wasn't very um, compliant, so we're redoing it again with her. Um, it's amazing, and, and most doctors have to use three antibiotics for that. So what to do with hidden infections? Food really is medicine in terms of this as well. 80% of your immune system is in the digestive tract. So if you're eating foods that are causing inflammation and irritation, this could be leading to um, chronic colds and flus, and you're just finding that you're not able to stay as healthy. So um, the uh, uh, SED diet, GAPS diet, and really cutting out sugar. Sugar is, um, it inhibits your immune system for several days when you, when you eat sugar. And then foods for immune support, mushrooms are wonderful, very antiviral, um, onions, garlic, ginger, again, zinc-rich foods. I prescribe oysters all the time. They usually make patients cringe, but I love oysters and they're loaded with zinc. Pumpkin seeds are also a rich source of zinc. Um, and then vitamin C-rich foods and vitamin A-rich foods. Um, liver would be a great example. And then here's a bunch of different supplements. Again, this really just depends on what it is that we're finding. Some of these... Um, Herbs are antiviral, some of them are antibacterial. It just really depends on what it is that's going on. The next thing is toxicity. So you can have the most amazing diet known to mankind and you can literally be toxic. We are living in a toxic world. There are so many different chemicals that haven't even been tested in it that are in our environment and are affecting us. So even babies that are born are born into you know, a toxic world and there's so many things we can do to help detoxify ourselves and diet isn't gonna be doing that alone. So in my practice, I test a lot for heavy metals. I find it in so many of us, mercury, lead, arsenic. Um, mercury in particular is extremely 
toxic to the thyroid. So maybe you have hypothyroidism and uh, haven't really gotten to the root issue. What I would strongly recommend is doing some heavy metal testing and seeing if that's happening for you. If you have silver fillings in your mouth, 50% of that is actually mercury. So you want to get that checked out. And um, if you have had uh, silver fillings put in, you want to go to a dentist who is really savvy in doing that. So I can give you guys a website if you're curious about that. Just come and see me after. And it's um, a website that lists uh, biological dentists that will actually do it right. I don't know if I know it off the top of my head. I think it's I-O-M-T something.org. If you just Google biological dentist, it's the first one that pops up and you can find one in your area. And then, um, and then environmental toxins as well, like BPA, phthalates, and pesticides. So for my patients, I have them detox every six months because you get the, the toxins out, but then you're re-exposed re again. This is an example of a heavy metal test that's done in the urine. So for this patient, she has high lead and also off the charts mercury. And so doing a round of uh, chelation, which is a heavy metal detoxification and retesting, these levels went way down. So um, some food... Um, suggestions here for toxicity, so cutting out the pesticides. If you go completely pesticide-free in your food, within a week you've reduced your levels in your blood by 90% of pesticides. So it makes a huge difference to go organic. And I highly recommend the Environmental Working Group for that. They have a, a really brilliant website that um, goes through all the different kinds of environmental toxicity scores, um, what kinds of foods are the highest in that, so you don't have to break the bank by going organic. You can see which ones are the most important. Um, and then supplements. We use a lot of injectable glutathione. Glutathione is um, it's your body's most abundant antioxidant, so it really packs a punch when you're doing de detoxification. But there's ways you can boost that with your diet. So any of the foods that smell kind of farty, those are the ones that are going to boost your glutathione. So like sulfur-rich foods, so like broccoli and cauliflower and eggs and those kinds of things boost your own body, body's production of glutathione. So this is looking at the liver detoxification pathway. So you have two pathways of liver detox, phase one and phase two. So just to really simplify it, imagine you going around your house and collecting all the trash. That's phase one, is collecting the trash and then putting it all in one spot. And then phase two is actually taking it out to the dumpster. So if you're just doing phase one, you're going to be just accumulating a lot of trash and not actually getting rid of it. So phase two is especially important with, uh, with detoxification. And there's ways to help boost that with your diet. So if you, are, if you know that you are exposed to a lot of toxins, which we all are, then you want to be eating more foods that are going to help to promote phase two. And these are things, like I just mentioned, the foods that are high in glutathione. So um, kind of those sulfur-rich foods like broccoli and garlic. That's why broccoli is so good for you, because it's such a great detoxifier. And then other kinds of amino acids, which comes from protein. So many ladies aren't having enough protein. And then we can actually test for these things and see maybe these uh, pathways are low for you. The last thing that I find for many patients is nu nutrient deficiencies. So you can have, again, a perfect diet, but if you're not absorbing these nutrients, you can get some real deficiencies. The most common one that I'm seeing in women is, um, is this list here. So calcium, CoQ10. This is actually a picture of chromium. Isn't it pretty? It's so beautiful. Selenium and magnesium. And this is tested through um, blood work. So here's an example of a patient of mine. I think she's 36. Um, we found for her, she was low in glutathione, CoQ10, and selenium. She was coming to me with raging acne. So um, we put her on a protocol of gut healing, uh, replenishing some of these nutrient deficiencies. She actually had H. pylori, so she had that bacteria in her stomach. So we treated that with Metula T, retested, it was gone. Um, and then it was four months later, we retested, and her nutrient levels were back to optimal. She had no deficiencies. She was feeling much better. Her um, acne was gone, no more bloating or gas. That's just one example. The last thing I want to mention is for many of us women, we have putting yourself last syndrome. So you, you really are there serving everyone, your kids, your husband, your friends, and you put yourself last and then you're giving from your reserves and you're a crazy person. So this is really a big issue. So here's some remedies for that. Number one, start your morning with a ritual. Don't just start your morning in bed looking at your phone, looking at your email. Start in a relaxed way. Um, my podcast, Dr. Low Radio, we did a show um, called The Miracle Morning. So if you haven't listened to that, check it out. And it's all about just starting your day with the morning ritual. Putter time. This is when you're doing nothing. This is actually scheduled time when you don't have anything planned. Doesn't that sound amazing, right? It's no actual... Um, like goal you have to meet with that. Um, for myself, I try to do like two to four hours a week of doing literally nothing. 
Uh, one course that really changed my life is called the Queen Course. This is a, a program through PAX Programs, and I really can't go into it right now because I have to wrap it up, but please check out the Queen Course, especially for you women, it's, it's especially important. And then the Landmark Forum, this is a course I did a few years ago that made a huge difference in my life, and it was about just getting complete with whatever it is that holds me back in my life. Thank you so much, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. <laughs> What do you recommend for um, getting rid of yeast? And also, what are good, um, do you have like a general detox that you recommend? Uh, so getting rid of yeast. So the first thing is looking at what it is that's causing the yeast. So addressing the diet, you want to cut out the sugars because that's going to be feeding it. Um, I've found in a lot of my patients who get recurrent yeast, it's not going away. We look at heavy metals because that can be, um, the reason why you have yeast is to protect yourself from the heavy metals. So you want to do some heavy metal testing if that's something that's a recurrent thing. Um, and then I've used some supplements that are great for it. I love Apex Energetics. They have a, um, a supplement called Yeast Anil that's worked really well. And it just has a lot of different, um, you know, herbs like uh, wormwood and... Um, uh, I think there's berberine in there and some other anti-yeast um, like um, oregano and then grapefruit seed extract. Those are some other herbs. And then for a detox, um, I've used a couple companies that I really love. Thorn is amazing. I love Apex Energetics. And um, it's generally a, like a protein powder that has some liver cofactors, some herbs, and then they're doing a very anti-inflammatory diet, cutting out alcohol, cutting out coffee, you know. And so we do that about every six months or so. I have a question about the parasites. I keep hearing that this weekend and had never really thought about that before. Um, how do we, can we test? Is there a test we can do, like send off somewhere from home, or do we need to go through a doctor, and how do we get rid of them? Hmm. Well, I'm not really sure if there's one you can do on your own. You probably could. You can find anything online now. But the, the thing is, is that you would know how to address it. So I do think, especially with, with parasites, you want to work with the doctor for that. Um, because some parasites I can treat naturally and other ones I have to use medications for most people. So um, I use BioHealth. I think they're really great at detecting H. pylori um, and also parasites. And then Doctor's Data is great for looking at bacteria and other things like leaky gut markers. Um, but there's other great ones that are out there. Genova's great. Um, some doctors really like Metametrics. I haven't used them as, I don't, I don't really prefer Metametrics as much. But um, yeah, those are some of the stool tests you can do. If you have a patient that has SIBO, uh -huh. um, mercury toxicity, and yeast, do you treat them simultaneously or one in order, like one before another? So SIBO, mercury toxicity, and yeast. Um, what I would probably do for that patient is start with the basics, make sure they're eating well, make sure their stress level is low, because I would look at what the common theme of that is, and, it, and it's just general... Um, kind of just lower vitality, they're, they're, they're attracting a lot of different things, you know? So I would probably look at lifestyle and address that, make sure stress level is low, because then they can tolerate, you know, anti-SIBO protocol or anti-yeast or whatever. I would start with the gut, and then once they're strong enough, I would do chelation with them. Yeah, and it's all, it all depends on the person, you know? Yeah. All right, that's all the time we have. Okay, thank you.